Alrighty guys, I'm Casey and welcome to a brand new episode of our Stone Block 2 Adventure guys, welcome back. Yeah, if you missed the last episode, we just upgraded a bunch of the Ender IO, we looked at how to get the enhanced Ender IO machines, we also looked at how to connect up external storage to our AE system, so not only do we have the ME drives there in the background, but we also have storage drawers spread throughout the farms in our base, hooked up to the ME system, so I can just go in here and see all my sieving goodies, see all of my iron and whatnot, see every single thing that I want to see in here. Now, what do I want to do in today's episode? Well, today's main part of today's episode, what I want to do is, is I want to build the best mob farm that I know how to build. This one is good. This one gets me a fair amount of goodies. Don't get me wrong. But I think that we can do bigger and better. So if you could, leave the video a like, hit subscribe, and let's get into the episode. So this is the room that I've chosen to make the farm in. It's right next to the ore ingot room, which is right there. We may have this connected to the ore processing plant. We may not. I don't know yet. Um, we'll see in the near future on that one. But... The way that I want to construct this farm is, one, I don't want it to use any power. That's one of my main things. I don't want it to use any power on this farm to run even if we don't have power. And two, I want this farm to be able to be turned on and off. I plan to have many, many, many spawning platforms. So um, I'm worried that it might lag out the, the server a bit. So I do want the ability to be able to turn it on off as opposed to just having it run continuously but what we're going to do is we're going to build this thing from the ground up and actually i know exactly what i'm going to do with that door over there in that room there i've got the perfect idea for it but yeah i want this to be able to be turned on and off so we're going to build it from the ground up so i think the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to start with this sort of killing chamber right here and i do want this to look fairly cool and i want you to be able to see the mobs in it but, I think we already discussed how we are going to kill the mob. So there are a few ways that we can kill mobs in this pack. One of them is by using a grinder. Uh, where is it? Um, yeah. But this requires draconic evolution. There's actually this mob masher here as well. But um, I think I'm just going to go with a good old fashioned way. We can always change out the killing chamber if we need to in the future. And I'm just going to go with these diamond spikes because they don't require power and we're going to need a grand total of 18 of these so there's 20 now these are going to drop experience orbs they are also going to drop us player kills as well so we'll get things like heads if we were to kill them ourselves things that we would only get off of mobs if we were to kill them as opposed to a machine to kill them which is one of the reasons i like to use these and again they don't use power so they're really easy and you just place them down with a right click so simple like this they can even be placed sideways like that should you want to do them like that i'm not going to do them like that i'm more than happy with these but be careful not only do they damage mobs they also damage you now i think you can actually sneak over them no you can't Ah, what am I thinking of then? There's something that you can sneak over. Is it magma blocks? It might be magma blocks that deal damage. So this is a killing chamber. This is where they are going to land. This is where they are going to kill. So, we need to think of a couple of things here. First of all, when they land and they die, they are going to drop items. And they are also going to drop experience. So we need a way to get those out of here. So we're going to keep this fairly simple. We're just going to use a vacuum chest here. There's this vacuum chest here from Ender.io. That requires iron, a pulsating crystal, which is just pulsating iron and a diamond. We can get that fairly easy. And the rest of this is fairly easy. This is a vacuum chest. And then we're also going to use this XP vacuum, if I can. This experience rod requires solarium. Do we have any solarium? We do not. Okay. Solarium isn't that difficult to get. We've covered this before, but I'll go over it very, very briefly. It's just soul sand and gold in the alloy smelter. And just like that, our solarium is being made up. I've got quite a bunch of this making up, so we should have plenty of this left over. We've got enough for this XP vacuum already, though, so we'll just go ahead and throw those in there. And uh, what was it? It was the, uh, the vacuum. I always put two C's in vacuum for some reason. It's two U's, isn't it? So we need this experience rod right here. And then, oh, we need another pulsating iron crystal, so we'll make that up. And boom, 
The thing that I love about the ME system is even though this can be made with this iron alloy, which I don't even know what it is. It's iron, osmium, and lead. It's actually iron and... Is that any other ingot? I mean, it, fair news, fair news. Okay, okay. But now that we've got these, we can go ahead and set these up. So these vacuum chests and XP orbs, they work exactly how you would expect them to do. They just vacuum up XP within a radius. I'm going to put them slap bang in the middle right here so that they can pick up from both sides. Now, it doesn't look like these do actually need any power, which is good. We can increase the range. If we show the range, you can see range is more than adequate. We can actually tone this down a little bit, I think. I think that's a, that's a perfect amount of range. But uh, yeah, it's going to pick up everything. We can hide the range. Now, this one's going to XP vacuum. This one is going to XP items. Now, we do want to be able to store these as well. We'll put this down to, what was it? Uh, three? No, we'll put it down one more. Yeah, it was to three, wasn't it? Yeah, there we go. Brilliant. Brilliant. We can hide the range. So, these are going to export items to various different things. And we need to look at how we are going to store them. Now, we're going to store our items. Of course, we're going to store items in a storage drawer. But what about XP? How are we going to store XP? Well, let's get into it. Now, XP is just a liquid. We can store it in pretty much anything that a liquid would store in, I would imagine. I've never tried storing it in tanks because I always go for the better option because it's something that I want to be able to withdraw the levels as and when I need to. So we're going to try storing it into this experience obelisk. Now, this is fairly easy. We need one of these experience rods. We know how to craft those. Uh, we've, we've got the en energetic alloy. The fuel tank or the fluid tank should be easy enough. We've made up the solarium. The only thing we need is this solarium, this soul machine chassis, which we covered in the last episode. And I think I still got one of those made up. Do I not have one of those made up? Okay. Do I have enough to make up one of these? No, I need... Was that brown dye that I needed? Yes. Good job I've got some coconut perks for having a tree farm. That doesn't work for some reason. Maybe it's because uh, we also need soul powder. So how do I get organic brown dye? Right. Okay. We've covered this before, so I'm just going to go ahead and do this off camera. For this soul powder, by the way, it's just solarium in a alloy smelter. Oh, sorry, a sag, sag mill. And that'll just pulverize that down for us and get us that. Now, the trimmings are a little bit more difficult. These actually require leaves. And I don't know if I actually have any leaves. I do, yes. All we do is we need to just pop these in here. I decided I was actually going to showcase how to get this just in case you guys want to get it too. But once this is done, we'll start getting them trimmings. Any leaves will work. Uh, it's not a guarantee that you'll get it, but uh, there is a chance. A 2% chance. So we're actually going to take this moment to do something to increase our chances. We're going to grab some of this dark steel that I made up last episode. And we're going to put in a dark steel ball. Now what this will do is it'll add multipliers to that. Dark steel ball is made like so. That actually makes 24. Okay, that's like new to me. Uh, it didn't make 24 before. It used to only make four. So we can throw that in there. We can throw this in here. And I don't know if this allows for one. No, it does not. So now I've just got to put a bucket ton of leaves in there and hope to get some trimming. So with this done, we've got the twigs and the prunings that we needed. Uh, we need something to do it with. Now I've been using congulated blood because I got a bunch of this from my Tinker Smell Tree. Just when you build your Tinker Smell Tree, make it completely dark inside and don't light it up. Mobs will spawn in there and then when they die, they leave blood and you can just pour it into the casting table without a cast and you'll get this congulated blood. I've said this a few times. So uh, we're just gonna, uh, we're gonna throw this and this. Uh, can I not? Uh, no, don't do that. What, what, what are you doing up? You're doing something up. I'm curious. I'm curious. Organic black dye. Don't actually want that. I want that doing up. Now we've got our organic black dye. Is there any more of this doing up? No, they don't really use like a bunch of it. Who needs jungles? <laughs> Is this the first time that we've done this? I feel like this might have been actually because we didn't get that before. Uh, so we're making up this soul machine chassis. I'm pretty sure though that we've made up one of these before. Uh, maybe you could use other dye and I just... Maybe we had some? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. There we go. We got six, and uh, we should have some of these chassis in here somewhere. Uh, yes. Uh, we'll make up We'll make up six of these. We may as well. I've got a feeling we may need these down the line. So uh, we'll make them up in you. And just like that, they are done. Fantastic stuff. Now, can we make up the EXP orb? Obelisk, rather. 
We should have everything that we need to make this up. Uh, I'm not missing the tank because I remember distinctly remember making that tank. Maybe it just doesn't pull it from the thingy. Sometimes the ME system can glitch out a little bit. But there we go. We've got this and this should be able to store the XP. Should be able to. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to put it down here right next to this. And I'm going to tell this to insert. Now I have already set one up over here. I've put a uh, conduit thing on it so that uh, if we scroll over this, you can see. Put that on it. A painted conduit facade so that we can, uh, can kind of hide what it looks like. But uh, yeah, so any XP should get vacuumed up by this and put it here. We can also store our levels in here. Uh, we can store 10 levels. We can store all of our levels. We can retrieve all of our levels. 10 levels or 1 level and say we store. So it's a pretty useful thing to have. I kind of like this. But yeah, so now what I need to do is I need to... Actually, no, what I need to do is I need to do this section right over here. The storage section of where we're going to store our items. That's what I need to do. You know, I'm just sat here making these up and something has occurred to me. Something that I have been meaning to do for like five or six episodes now and I haven't done it. So uh, we're going to do it in this episode. I've got 16 unclaimed quests. 16 of them. Uh, we could just click collect rewards. Let's see what we got. We got a party pickaxe. We got a chance cube. We got a demonic the gargantuan drum. That's pretty cool. Void metal ingot. Uh, entity detector. A double aid capacitor. Cobblestone generator. Um, dragon egg crooks, okay. Uh, energetic jetpack, okay. Uh, we didn't really get too much, did we? But at least we claimed them. So I made some progress in the building style of things, and I also put in the storage drawers. This is going to be where we store the vast majority of the items. Now, I haven't done this wall yet because I'm still going on in exactly what I want to do over here. I've got an idea, but I don't know how that's going to translate into actually being operational but I know what I want to do over here uh, so I'm gonna leave that until I actually get into that but I think the first thing that I want to do is actually get the spawning platforms in now like I said I want to have a lot of spawning spawning platforms quite a few spawning platforms actually and I want to be able to turn this on and off but I figured what we do is we just make the first ones together now since these spawning platforms are going to be quite long in length they are likely going to overhang these guys so I think I want to take it up just, just a little bit more. So I've got the first of the spawning platforms in. One, two, three, and four. I'm not going to worry too much about decorating up here because we are never going to see this part of it. But like I said, I do want this to be able to be turned on and off. So that's something that we have to look at in the near future. But I think for right now, these aren't the only ones I want. I want multiple going up in layers. So I think the first thing that we need to do is just dig out the rest of this up to as far as we can go. So it's time to, for me to put on some good old fashioned rock music, listen to some Bon Jovi and just mine out a bunch of stone. Good times. With KC, it goes all the way up. To bedrock, yes. Up to bedrock. Well, <laughs> now that's done, we can actually start working on the spawning platforms. And I figured we'd do one together, then I'd just repeat the process over and over again to get them all done. Now, like I said, I want the ability to turn these on and off, which means we're going to need a redstone lever, and we're going to have to run redstone to this thing. Now, normally you run redstone by just simply putting it down on a block like so and it's very very annoying this pack actually has something that can help that it's called a red stone conduit and what this can do is this can transfer redstone vertically like it does power or items or anything like that but it does require this redstone alloy ingot which we don't have yet but it's very easy to make it's just redstone and silicone so i'm just going to grab up some redstone right here uh, where's my redstone there's my redstone and I've already taken the liberty of crafting up some silicon. Or when I say craft up silicon, uh, stop doing that. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do that. Like I said, I sagged a lot of clay. So let's just throw this in here. And hopefully this starts pulling this in now. If I put that to alloy only, is that only going to do this? Yes, good. Thank you. Okay. So we need to let that do up, but we can at least start the platform 
Now, and all I'm going to need for this is dirt and a bunch of it. So the way that each of these spawning platforms is going to work is we are going to have dirt on them like so. And this is going to fill the entire ground area. Gone ahead and got the dirt down, but I've come back here for some of this redstone alloy for the next bit so we can do this next bit together. And all we're going to do is we're going to create some of this redstone conduit, which is really easy to make up now that we've got this redstone alloy. We'll just make up a couple of stacks. Here. We are going to go through this like nobody's business because we do have a long way up to go. Like I said, got the dirt in. I've got this and now we need to decide exactly where we are going to place all of this. So I've decided that I'm going to actually bring this conduit up right here. And we'll take this up on this one. And again, we are going to hide this using conduit binders or conduit facades rather. But when we get to here, we need to somehow get it going upwards. So what it'll do is it'll come up. Actually, you know, I think I'm going to run this across there then up here i think that would be the best one and have it all coming out from this corner now with a framework all in place it's looking good it's looking good but it's not done yet i brought it all the way down we need to actually put a lever on this thing and switch it on now if we try to put a lever on this it's not going to let us we could put a lever here and it would work perfectly fine but that's not exactly what i want what i actually want is the lever to be on the wall so i've got some conduit facades right here we should just be able to use these uh, fairly simply to put it on the wall and I think what we'll do is we'll put it on uh, yeah we'll put it on this block we'll put it on this block uh, where did my lever go so we could just put that lever there and if we use the yatter wrench we can see that that's on there we can right click this uh, this is input uh, I think that means that uh, this is going to get a signal but we'll try it we'll try it we'll try it I'm not a redstone master so uh, no it's 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 not getting a signal okay okay um this needs to be output uh, what about output strong signal? And you input. Redstone lamp still not on. So after much head scratching and googling, I figured out what the problem is and why these aren't working. If you look, they are not working. Well, first of all, this needs to be set to output or rather input. Cause this is the redstone signal going into the surface. Uh, this one needs to be set to output, which I've got correct. But still, it would not work. I looked at a picture that they showed it again. Uh, the picture was correct. I even tried it with a very simple line. Just connecting a redstone conduit, a lever, and a glowstone lamp in just one line. And still, it would not work. Then I had a bit of a closer look. And look, input is on red, but the output is on green. If we change this to red, and then flip the lever, it works. <laughs> so... I've got to do that for every single one, but I think there might be a quicker way, but I'm not sure. So I'm hoping that this works. This is called a conduit probe, and we are going to need to make ourselves up a, another Yeta wrench, because I don't want to give it my only one. But this should allow us to copy and paste. Shift and right click, we can click this. This should be allow us to just copy and paste settings. So I'm hoping that if I just shift, well, well actually, I don't know if I have to shift or right click. Uh, shift right click that's copied that one so if we come up here and uh, let's just grab a redstone lamp and i want to put one uh we'll put one two from the back and two from the front if i just paste it yes yes so it's going to save me a bunch of time and hopefully that's going to be enough to light up all of this area good 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 now i just need to get the rest of these glowstone lamps put in now we've got all of the redstone lamps connected on this one spawning platform and it's pretty good. I think what I'm going to do next, though, is I'm going to actually get in the next layers and just start taking this up. Because this is going to be a pain to do and a long task. So I'm going to get that done now. It's taken the better part of about three hours to do this. But it goes all the way down and all the way up. You can actually see the diamond spikes from all the way up here. But now that we're up here, I actually want to worry about how we are going to push the mobs off. And I'm thinking what we'll do is keep it fairly simple and just use fans. Uh, not, I mean, th 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 that's fine. This should push the mobs all the way to the end. And yeah, that should push them off. That should push them off. I just want to check because inevitably this will come out to here. So let's just see. 
It's just push, 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 push. And not quite to the end. Okay. Not quite to the end. So we do need a little something at the end to push them off. But that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. I need to get these all in place though all the way around. And I think I'm going to be very plentiful with them. I think plentiful is better than uh, than not. But yeah, I've got to do this on all one million layers. Got the dirt in, got the fans in, got the redstone in, got everything in going on up there. And you can see we got the witch water right there. We've got one shoot that has witch water on it. And we've got one shoot that doesn't. So we'll get regular mobs and nether mobs. So we switch this off. Lights should all go out up there. And we should soon start to see mobs dropping. Well, there goes one. Most of them may die from fall damage alone. So yeah, it is in fact working a treat. Now, there are a couple of uh, rough edges up there that we do need to sort out. Like I said, the fan doesn't fully push them off the end. So I've made up these vector plates that I am going to... Put around and these fake fake plates basically work like whatever direction they point they do so they're, they're very simple and i am going to put them up there but i'm going to fine tune this off camera guys as well as sort of figuring out how to store everything our storage is back here this is not the right setting so i i did i did borrow behind it i decided to bore it underneath it for the chest right here so that i've got access to them this farm is going to produce a considerable amount of drops as you can see we're already getting quite a few drops here and uh yeah, obviously i've got to, i've got to sort all of these out i think i'm going to add a little bit of a water thing up there so that when they fall they actually fall through water so they don't take fall damage and don't die from fall damage like that one's all right because this one is fine they're not dying of uh fall damage but I definitely think the fact that uh, the fans are pushing them almost to the edge and they've got to walk off the edge is hurting our rates. We should be getting significantly more rates here. So I am going to do that. There's also one other thing that I need to do. Um, but I'm going to do them in the other episode because I do have a really cool idea for the next episode. So I am going to call this one here, guys. If you've enjoyed the video, do me a favor. Leave it a like and hit subscribe. As always, I'm Casey. Thank you so much for watching. Take care now, guys. Bye.